Hello, my name is Dr. Richard Wallace. With I'm an uh, adjunct associate professor at the University of Illinois in the Department of Animal Sciences, and I'm also a senior veterinarian for Pfizer Animal Health in the Dairy Technical Service team. What I want to do is go through a little bit of information on how we can evaluate milk quality and udder health with PC Dart. And typically where I start with this is with the typical DHI, what might be called the 202 report or the, the um, report that we get from uh, DHI as a printout. And there's a couple places you can pick that up in PC Dart. One place is you can click on this print tab and you'll notice that there is a report called the 802 Herd Summary Stage of Lactation and Utter Health. One way to get it. Another way to get it is if we start up with this blue screen with herd statistics today. If you click on test day statistics and then right click in this white area somewhere, you'll notice that a pop up comes where you can again pull up the 802 stage of lactation of utter health. And I want to show you one third play, way, way we can pick that up is over in the reports. So if you click on the report set here, or you can click on view and go down to reports, or you can click F5, you can get to this report page. So many ways to get to the report page. Each PC Dart program will have a tab here under reports called Milk Production and Utter Health. If you expand that with a little plus sign, you'll see that there is an 802 report listed in here. Now, um, you'll see many other reports that I have, and that's because I use these for consulting purposes, but um, your, your program on initial installation won't have all these in there, but the 802 report will be listed in there as well. And so again, you have the option to click on that report, and then we can go over here where we can select which test day you want to look at. So typically I look at the most recent test day, and then each month I look at the new test day. But if you do want to go back in time, you have the ability to scroll back and look at this report all the way back, at, in our case, into 1997. So if you take a look at the Test date, um, we don't talk about string too much, but this is actually where you can break it out by breed. Um, the university herd has multiple breeds, and so if we want to look at just the Holstein cows, we would look at string one. From an utter health standpoint, the way I look at it, though, is that the jerseys and the other colored breeds in the herd are exposed to the same pathogens as the Holsteins are. So I typically look at utter health um, irrespective of breed. When we go to the milk production information, we're probably going to, again, break that out by breed because there are obvious differences in milk volume as well as fat and protein when we look at it from a breed standpoint. So if we just select this herd, you can either double-click on this to run the report or you highlight it and then go up to the preview button, and that will kick it out in a preview format. And then from there, we can kind of scroll through. And if I'm going to scroll down a little, little bit, you won't see the top anymore, but... Uh, again, very typical information that you might see on a DHI printout that comes after test day and mailed to the farm. Most of the time I see these on dairies uh, in a big packet collecting dust sitting on a shelf somewhere. So using the PC Dart program to do this evaluation helps keep this a little bit more fresh and a little bit more active. This first tab table here gives you what I like to call the slice and dice analysis. So We've sliced it by lactation, um, stage of lactation, so 1 to 40 days in milk, 41 to 100. So it's sliced out by the stages of lactation, and then we dice it by lactation number, first, second, and third, and greater. This upper quadrant here gives you the number of animals in each of those cells. So I typically don't like to look at the, uh, or I, I evaluate critically any numbers that have less than five animals in a cell. And in this example, we've got 183 animals tested on this last test day, and the smallest number we have is five. So I would accept that the information within that cell is going to be roughly um, um, adequate. The reason you do that is if you have one cow that has a really high value or a low value and you only have three animals in that group, it's going to throw that number off when we look down here at milk production and somatic cell score. So as I mentioned, this is then milk production sliced and diced. So you can see that our heifers are starting off at 1 to 40 days in milk, first lactation animals at about 74. But keep in mind, this milk production data for this mixed breed herd um, is going to include the colored breeds as well as the uh, Holstein. So this is not just Holstein animals that are in this 74 group. 
But probably more important from a milk quality standpoint is looking at where we're at from a somatic cell score standpoint. And so you can see that our first lactation heifers are starting their lactation at a 1.6 linear score, which is really excellent when you start thinking about from that standpoint. And as they work their way through the lactation, they really don't ever get much over 2.5. And the average for our first lactation animals is a 2.0. And so if we use that 2.0 as sort of our cut point um, for a really excellent somatic cell count, you can see that uh, at least the first lactation animals in the U of I herd are doing very well. If you don't know how to interpret somatic cell score or you're not real familiar with the linear score system, this other uh, chart over here on the right-hand side will really help you define that. So if you look at the numbers up here, a linear score of 0, 1, 2, or 3 would be a somatic cell count below 142,000. A linear score of 4 is going to be a score, a somatic cell count between 142 and 283. And so typically we use this score 4 and less to be a clean cow and a score 4 and greater to be a cow that is dirty or has some kind of subclinical infection. And so as we look at the groups here by lactation number, I think you can see the problematic group in the university dairy is actually this third and greater lactation. We have 16% of those third and lactation graders with a somatic cell score of 7, 8, or 9, or over 1 million somatic cell counts. So um, again, this is probably a problematic area for the herd. We've got a few chronic cows, and um, we don't need to get into, I guess, why that might happen at this point in time, but certainly having some research projects going on, we end up having to keep some cows around that we may not normally have because they're in research projects. The, uh, the next chart that you have at the bottom of this report is the yearly mastitis summary. So it gives you the breakdown of where our low somatic cell count cows, our really low cows, are as we work through the year. So where this would be the month dropped would be September of 2011 where we had 78 percent and we're currently at 74 with an average of 75. Really, really very good when you look at the whole herd from a standpoint. Um, from a linear score of four, we're running 11. And so my goal is actually to have at least 85 percent of the herd below a linear score of four throughout the 12 months of the year. And so if you add these two up, you can see we're at 86. So we're right uh, just a, above the, the goal where we'd like to be. And so um, that's really a, a fairly good, successful story for this university herd. Gives you the linear score over time, and then the weighted somatic cell count is listed there as well. And so you can see we've had a little bit of a creep up, but uh, look at the months. We're looking at August and September, and anybody that was in the Midwest and realizes that uh, we had that uh, very dry hot weather and the drought we had in the Midwest, it certainly would explain some of the increase in somatic cell count, um, trying to keep cows cool, and certainly some of those exposure issues happen as well. So this is usually where I start with this 802 report when I'm thinking about milk quality. And uh, the next place then that I go is into some of the other reports that are available. And I like to use graphical information. Our producers, when we're talking to them about problems on dairies, we really like to look at it from a graph, graphical standpoint. And so I'm going to use uh, one of these graphic icons up here. We have herd graphs, and then we have cow graphs. And I'm going to start with the cow graphs. So if I click on that cow graph icon, you can see that we have some sort of predefined graphs that are sitting here within the different categories. And so we have four of them that are lined up here for us from an utter health standpoint. And the first one I'm going to look at is a graph that looks at plotting the cows in the herd with their previous somatic cell score versus their current. So many people are used to looking at this graph. If I plot it up here, um, I'm going to do a couple little um, manipulations to make it visually look more apparent, uh, um, appealing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck this uh, line, which is a regression line of the data. Um, so it basically, for this point in this graph, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to partition these data by lactation number. So if I hit that partition by, you'll notice that now we have multiple different colors. So the little red dots are going to represent our first lactation animals, and there are 74 on this chart. 
the green triangles are going to represent second lactation animals, and there's three or 30. And then the blue diamonds are going to represent third and greater lactation, and we have almost 50 cows in that category. Then the next thing I'm going to do, remember, a linear score of four is our ultimate goal to stay below a linear score of four. I'm going to check this crosshair box, and that sets me up a set of crosshairs. Now I can move each one of these lines individually, or left and right or up and down, or I can grab it in the middle and I can move them both at the same time. So if you're really talented with your mouse, you can grab and then hold. I'm, I'm left click and I hold that. And I'm going to pull that over to a linear score of four, and I'm going to drop this down to a linear score of four. And the nice thing is, is that it, over here in the lower right hand corner, we get a, um, a percentile and a count in each one of these quadrants. And so as you look at this information, if the cow had a somatic cell score on the previous test day below a four, that would be a cow that we would consider uninfected. And if she has a current somatic cell score on the current test day below a four, she would have been uninfected on the current test day. So this group of cows correlates to this 107 cows here, or about 70% of the herd is uninfected, or the clean cows. Cows that had a linear score of four, below four in the previous test day, but currently are above a four, or in this quadrant right here, this quadrant would represent these 11 cows, or 7% of the herd, and these would be considered new infections. Last month they were low, this month they're high, or they're above a four, so these are new infections. If the cow had a previous somatic cell score above four, and currently they're above four, that would be these 22 cows or 14% of the herd that are chronic infections. So their scores have been high for two months in a row and we would consider those chronics. On the other hand, if cows had a previous somatic cell score above a four, but currently they're low now, these 13 cows or eight, almost 9% of the herd would be considered cured or new, uh, cured infections. And these could have been cured by being treated or most likely these are probably cured through natural, um, uh, the, just the, the cell, spontaneous cure that occurs um, naturally. <clears throat> so these quadrant graphs are actually fairly uh, nice to look at from the standpoint of uh, following what's happening with the new infection risk in the herd, the cure risk in the herd, and then our chronic rates. And I like to try and follow these numbers over time, and we have a couple other programs we can use, such as Herd Detective or Dairy Wellness Plan Manager, that help us monitor these quadrants over time. So what's the new infection risk, and how has that changed from month to month? <clears throat> One other thing we can do with this graph, if we uncheck the crosshairs, and we just want to see what this bad cow is. This cow here had a really high somatic cell score on the current month. We can click on it. And you'll see her number pops up here down in the bottom corner. So at that point, that would be that cow is 8329. And if I just double click on it, you'll see that her information comes up. And let's just move over to her status page. Um, we can see that um, her name is Sue. She's 301 days in milk. She's uh, 204 days since she was bred last. She's pregnant. She's been verified two times. But if I go to her status page, we can see that she had mastitis in her left rear quarter, and she's been treated with Spectramast over the last four days. So, you know, again, maybe the reason why she has that increase in somatic cell count, if we take a look at her most recent lactation, we can see she calved in at 27,000. She had a little flare up here at about 93 days in milk. Um, and then she really jumped up here at 276 days in milk. So um, obviously this is a cow that's that had mastitis, and that's why she's got that really high cell count currently right now. But pretty good cow from a milk production standpoint. Um, so just a way that we can monitor um, somatic cell count and milk quality from a um, cow graph standpoint. Uh, I'm going to jump over to a report because I've created a report that actually can look at that information as well. And this report is called uh, this milking cow and the cross tabs. So if you remember those numbers uh, that we had in each one of those quadrants, I'm going to view this report in cross tabs. And I'm going to go down here to count. 
And you can see here's the 11 cows that were in the new infection. So the previous somatic cell score was below from 0 to 4, but their current somatic cell score is above a 4. So there's the 11 cows that were newly infected. Here's the 107 cows that are clean cows. These are the 22 chronic cows, and here's the 13 cows that cured. And you'll also notice that it's set up so green being good and go, and those are our, our clean cows and our cure cows, and red being bad or new infections and chronic cows. If you want to see who these new infections are now, we can just click on that bar, and all of a sudden now those cows all pop up as the new infections. And you'll see that um, those actual somatic cell counts pop up and we've got an idea what's going on with what those cows are and then if you actually want to select one of those cows we can double click on the cow and her information comes up. So a really powerful tool is taking these reports and looking at what them what, what I, we call in cross tabs. Um, I don't have time to really talk about how we recreate this report but I'm going to just do a quick little view on it so you can see how the report's created. There's all sorts of database items that are listed here, but basically we're pulling up any cow that has a somatic cell count previous and a current test day somatic cell count. These are the controls that for that, and uh, that's how the report is then generated. And then you just click on View and Cross Tabs to see it that way. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to look at is actually this transition somatic cell score. So the way we looked at it from previous test day to current test day, we can also look at it from previous lactation to the first somatic cell score on their first on the most recent lactation. So in this graph, we're going to go ahead and do the same kind of thing. We're un uncheck that uh, regression line. I'm going to go ahead and partition it by lactation. And the first thing you'll notice that there's no red dots in this one because there's no lactation one animals that have been through a dry period. So remember, this is a graph looking at the, the somatic cell score at the end of the last lactation, comparing it to the first test day somatic cell score. And this is going to help us determine how is somatic cell count changing over the dry period. Helps us evaluate dry cow therapy as well as cleanliness in the dry cow barn as well as in the, in the fresh cow barn. Put the crosshairs again on four and four because in our fresh cows they're basically the same breakdown. And you can see that we have 11 cows that had new infections over the last lactation. We have five cows that are chronically infected or they did not clear up through the dry period or maybe got reinfected. And we have 16 or almost 18 percent of the cows that cured through the dry period. That same report can be made as we made in the previous, uh, for the uh, previous graph, if I exit, by looking at a transition cow cross tabs. Same kind of information, but now if we view that in cross tabs, and I look at the count, the same number of cows, um, I maybe had the crosshairs off a little bit, so there's 11 and 59, so it was off a little bit, but it was pretty darn close. Um, 11 new infections over the dry period, 59 clean cows, 5 that were chronic, and then there's 16 cows that cured throughout the uh, dry period. So again, just another way to look at this information um, graphically to help see how we're doing from month to month and time, uh, time to time. Um, we have several other graphs or reports that we can look at from the standpoint of milk quality, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to stop right there and we can move on to the next uh, categories. We're going to go through this.